An everyday situation. A man suddenly clutches his chest, gasps for breath and collapses. A race against time begins. The most important thing now is to check his heart and, if any auricular fibrillation is detected, to act immediately. That's why many public places are equipped with defibrillators. The instructions for those administering first aid are quite clear. First of all, the unit automatically prints out an electrocardiogram, or ECG as it's known. If evaluation of the ECG confirms auricular fibrillation, the defibrillator is activated. It sends a high-energy shock to the heart to stimulate it. The heart begins to beat and the brain is again supplied with oxygen. Speedy action can save lives because most cases of sudden death from cardiac arrest are the result of auricular fibrillation. One of the most important pieces of equipment for diagnosing cardiac malfunction is the electrocardiograph. It was developed by a Dutchman, Willem Eindhoven. Willem Eindhoven was born in 1860 in Saramang, in modern-day Indonesia, the eldest son of an army medical officer. When Willem was only 10, his father died and his mother decided to take the family back to Holland. After obtaining his school leaving certificate, Willem entered the University of Utrecht as a medical student, intent on following in his father's footsteps. In 1885, he received his doctorate. That same year, Eindhoven accepted a post as Professor of Physiology at the University of Leiden. There, he also began to study the effects of electricity on the human body. Attempts at using electricity for medical purposes had been made from earliest times. Even the ancient Greeks, it said, treated disorders with shocks from electric rays. The annual report of the Royal Human Society for 1774 describes how electric shocks were successfully used to resuscitate a child. In 1840, German physiologist Emile dubois Raymond used electrical measuring equipment to show that weak current flows in the nerves and muscles. He proved that the nerves receive and transmit stimuli by means of electrical impulses. This phenomenon can be observed not only in the nerves but also in the muscles, because they need an electrical impulse in order to contract. The heart muscle is a very special kind of muscle because it can generate these electrical impulses itself. The impulses are generated by the sinus node, the heart's natural pacemaker, and propagated throughout the heart muscle. Excited by these stimuli, the cells of the heart muscle contract. This contraction compresses the heart like a bellows that's squeezed, thus enabling it to work like a pump. The heart contains four cavities, the right and left atrium and the right and left ventricle, which are sealed off by cardiac valves. These valves only allow blood to flow in a certain direction. They prevent it from flowing back. The right side of the heart pumps oxygen-poor blood to the lungs, where it receives a fresh supply of oxygen. The left side of the heart pumps oxygen-rich blood to the body. The muscles then relax and the cycle begins again. This cardiac activity also causes changes in voltage potential to occur on the surface of the body. These changes follow the rhythmic contractions of the heart muscle. In London in 1887, 
Physiologist Augustus Désiré Waller succeeded in measuring these changes of electrical potential in tests carried out on his bulldog. However, Waller was unaware of the medical significance of his work. In 1895, Willem Eindhoven began to repeat Waller's experiments. He developed a standardized method of recording changes of electrical potential, which he called an electrocardiogram, or ECG for short. In the graph that was recorded, Eindhoven identified certain prominent waves, which he named alphabetically P, Q, R, S, and T. These letters, which are still used today, denote the individual phases of cardiac muscular contraction. Muscular stimulation in the form of electrical impulses originates in the sinus node located in the right atrium. The stimulus is transmitted to the atrium and makes it contract. On the ECG, this phase is visible as a P wave. The impulse then reaches the atrioventricular or AV node where it is passed on from the atria to the ventricles. The main function of the AV node is to delay this transfer so that the atria and the ventricles contract one after another. This delay function of the AV node can be seen on the ECG on the segment between the P wave and the QRS complex. From the AV node, the stimulus then spreads to the two ventricles. On the ECG, this is the QRS complex. The ST segment reveals the onset of impulse attenuation in the ventricles. During the T wave, the electric charge in the ventricles is restored. One electrocardiac cycle has now been completed. After a certain pause, the next cycle begins. The shorter the pause, the higher the cardiac frequency. Eindhoven recorded more than 5,000 electrocardiograms in a systematic study of electrocardiac reaction, not only in humans, but also in animals. With the help of a device normally used in telegraphy, Eindhoven developed a measuring instrument which enabled him to record the minute differences in electrical potential on the skin on a photographic plate. Through this improvement in his measuring and recording system, Eindhoven was finally able to develop the instrument which formed the basis of modern cardiology and provided access to the electrical function of the heart. Eindhoven stipulated how the electrodes were to be attached to the body, one each to the left and the right arm and one on the left leg. The differences in potential between these three points are measured and portrayed on three different ECG graphs, known as derivations. The Eindhoven derivations are still used today by emergency services. The first electrocardiographs were almost room-sized and, together with the auxiliary equipment, weighed several hundred kilograms. It took several technically experienced assistants to operate them. In order to monitor bedridden patients in Leiden Hospital from his laboratory, in 1903, Eindhoven laid electrical cables up to two kilometers long to produce the first telecardiograms. The laboratory in Leiden was now visited by scientists from all over the world. In addition to developing the ECG, Eindhoven turned to the sounds made by the heart. In 1907, he wrote an article on recording human heart sounds by means of a string galvanometer. He introduced a new method of cardiac diagnosis, phonocardiography, the graphic recording of heart sounds. This technique enables congenital heart defects to be detected. In 1924, Willem Eindhoven received the Nobel Prize for Medicine for his efforts in discovering the mechanism of the electrocardiogram. The development of valve and amplifier technology enabled smaller electrocardiograms to be built. The early 1920s saw the emergence of the first mobile units, followed in 1930 by the first portable devices.
Willem Eindhoven never witnessed these developments. He died on September the 28th, 1927. But through his electrocardiographs, he had made his name immortal in the field of medicine. The ECG has been used for monitoring patients and for long-term recording ever since the 1950s. Electrocardiography has become the most important diagnostic method in cardiac medicine. Often the ECG also forms an integral part of routine health checks. The graph tells the doctor if the patient is suffering from arrhythmia or whether there is a problem with the propagation of electrical impulses in the heart muscle. Characteristic changes in the ECG graph enable heart disease to be diagnosed, like an impending heart attack, and even one that occurred some time ago. It is also possible to diagnose diseases of the coronary vessels, circulatory disturbances and arrhythmia. Today, the electrocardiograph is an indispensable part of cardiac diagnosis. Mobile ECG units can be used everywhere. With the help of cell phones, doctors can transmit data straight to a specialist at hospital who then makes the diagnosis and decides on the treatment. All public defibrillators also contain an electrocardiograph, which evaluates the heart's rhythm according to a standard derivation based on Eindhoven. Implantable defibrillators also work on the same principle. The defibrillator, which is connected up to an electrocardiograph, is implanted in the patient's chest, just under the skin, and linked directly to the heart via a probe. If the probe detects any auricular fibrillation, the defibrillator automatically generates an electrical impulse which stops the fibrillation. After the operation to implant it, the device has to be tested to make sure it functions properly. Fibrillation is induced artificially. The defibrillator then generates an electrical impulse. Here the device works and the patient's heart begins to beat again. Operations of this kind are becoming more and more routine. After just two or three days, the patient is discharged. This method helps to avert the risk of sudden death from a heart attack in patients with life-threatening arrhythmia. Doctors today use other types of electrical diagnostic equipment which function similar to an ECG. Like an electroencephalogram, EEG for short. With the help of some 20 electrodes placed on the scalp, differences in electrical potential can be measured, amplified and recorded as brain waves. The EEG enables morbid changes in the electrical activity of the brain to be registered. These include spasmic symptoms characteristic of epilepsy but an EEG can also be used to diagnose strokes and brain tumours. Through his basic research, Willem Eindhoven made a major contribution to the development of these diagnostic methods.